Hi everyone, today I have chosen a picture from this Rita Berman book. It seems a while since we've done any Rita Berman. I do love her books, I, uh, but I've got so many I tend to almost forget because they're little, they get lost in my pile. But we, I dug this one out and found a picture that I'm really keen to have a go at. So hopefully um, you'll enjoy watching me have a go. So this picture is the one that I have chosen that's come out just a tad so you can see. Um, it is this sort of galleon on water with uh, these sort of circular um, sea foam, maybe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a mix media page. So we're going to do some soft pastels. We're going to do some pencil. I'm going to start with the pencil work. I also find that a little bit easier because if I put the pastel down first, resting my hand on it can make it all smudgy and messy. I'm going to start by colouring the boat, the ship, the galleon, whatever we want to call it, and uh, then move on to um, to the background and then show you how I'm going to deal with these swirly bits. So I'm going to use my Derwent Chromaflow pencils. You can use any brand of pencil. I just picked these. I'm hoping they won't smudge too much with their pastel background. And um, I haven't used them for a while, so I thought I'd just have a go. I know they're quite an in-brand at the minute because they've just released their 72 set. This is only the 24 set, but I find it's uh, perfectly adequate. Um, this is called Natural Brown. It's number 21. I don't know whether the numbers tie up between the sets because it's just numbered 1 to 24. And, you know, when you slot in extra colours, I don't know what happens to their numbering. So I would probably take notice of the name. Natural Brown, it's the darkest brown in the set. So that's why I've picked it and I'm going to have a go at the areas of the bottom of the boat that I think will be dark and let's come in. You're not going to see me if I'm, uh, see what I'm doing if I'm too far away. We'll bring the boat into the middle of the picture. There we go. Right, so I'm going to go along the edge of this, um, the sort of front piece here. I don't know if that's, is that the stern or the bow? I have no idea. But... Uh, I'm quite impressed that I know those words, even though I don't know which is which. And I'm just going to fade the brown by uh, doing lighter, a lighter bit here. I'm sort of following the direction of these lines, which uh, makes it easy. I hope this is bright enough. I think it is. The uh, sun is pouring in and I've closed the blind down, left a little gap and put my lamp on. And I'm never sure whether leaving a little gap um, upsets the lamp a bit and it thinks it's brighter than it is but um, it helps me to see <laughs> if I shut it completely. It's a bit dark. I can um, see the page because of the lamp, but then I can't always see my pencils. <laughs> it helps if you can see them. Gosh, I can hear my computer next door whirring away. This one's called Raisin. And I'll show you, it's a slightly reddy brown. I would probably use more of a mid-brown if I had one in this set, but I don't. So we're just going to play with what we've got. Why not? Um, yes, I'm editing some videos while I'm filming. I'm sure you can't hear it, but my goodness, it's loud. It's lucky I'm not in there and recording because you would definitely hear it then. You can see how red that is, but I'm going to go over it with another colour and it will probably tone it down a bit, I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm making some long videos at the minute. Um, this is Burnt Sienna. You can see it's more yellowy, so, oops, sorry. So I'm hoping it might just tone it down. I'm going to go over the whole thing. We can layer up the colour a little bit as we, um, when we're ready to, uh, you know, to get the um, shading exactly as I want it. I don't want to leave any white in the middle. It's not a shiny metallic type thing, is it, a boat? But um, I want it to be paler so that it looks like it's got some shape and a bit of shine, but not sort of metallic type shine. I'm just trying to go over all of this raisin so that it tones down a little bit and looks a bit warmer. That's it. And I'm going to go back in with my dark brown again. That's called the natural brown, just to remind you. And uh, just go back over it just to really emphasise that dark area. Sometimes once you've gone over with a few colours, you might want to just sort of top up a bit, you know. What I'm doing at the moment is I'm making some members only videos and um, what I have done, I'm going to explain to you now, um, 
is I've taken videos where I've got several parts to a video, say four episodes or something like that, and I've mushed them to get smushed them all together into one big video. So you do get I haven't edited them because I'm um, it takes too long. So basically it says hello, welcome, and then the first part it says bye, and then it goes straight on to the new part which says hello again as if it's um I've just pushed them all together. So I haven't chopped out the hello and goodbyes in the middle. I think it should still make sense, I hope. Um, I'm going to do this bit. I'm going to only use a little bit of natural brown at the top and bottom. Then I'm going to go straight in with the raisin. Oh, my pencils are rolling. I don't know if you can hear them. And then over the top with the, with the burnt sienna. And I'm going to release those a little bit early. So if you remember, you get early access to some of the series that I've made. Um, and it means you can follow them along early if you want to. Non-members will still get all that content. I don't want to deprive anybody who can't afford to be a member or doesn't want to be a member from all that learning. So I'm going to continue to produce videos for everybody. I'm just going to let um, people who want to join the channel have a little perk by having some of them, not all of them, some of them early. I'm going to trial it, see how it works, see how people like it. I want to do the sails in a slightly golden-y colour. I don't really know why. I just had this idea and I'm going to try it. So that's that's the plan. So a video like this, which is all over in one um, video, probably won't go out early. But ones, as I say, ones that are a series, I will mush them together on, into one video, one big long video, and they'll all come out early. And you can still watch them in parts because obviously you could watch the first part, um, pause it, um, you know, go away, come back, watch the next part another day, whatever. So you can still watch it in parts because it is still split. So it still says goodbye at the end of the first section. So if you rather have little ones, you can watch it like that. But it just gives you something extra um, for your membership because, you know, YouTube's like, get people to join your channel, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, but I need to give people. And so I set that all up and I thought I need to give people something. You know, I have... You know, you get your sort of emojis and things like that, but it's not, it doesn't feel to me like it's enough. So, and I'm hoping to do at least one preview extra video a month. Um, I've got to see how I can fit it into my schedule. But the more members I have, the more it will be worth me doing more. And, you know, the more time I'll be able to sort of afford to commit to it. But um, it's a bit of an experiment. I'm going to use the amber gold. So it's just something I'm trying out. And as I say, nobody's going to miss any video content. I It's just not what I'm about. I just, I'm here to share with you all. You know, I'm not, I don't want anyone to miss anything because, you know, they can't afford to join. It's, you know, or they, um, you know, it's, it, it should be free for all. But it's just, you just get it a bit early. So that's my plan at the minute. I'm never intending on ever releasing things for members only that non-members will never get it's just no it's just it doesn't sit right with me you know i it's you know that's the way it is for me but uh as youtube was saying you know try this do this i thought well i'll have a go but uh you know i i want to be careful with it and make sure i'm not sure what i'm trying to work out what an, ah so this line here presumably is the flagpole and so that is a bit of sail I think that's what is going on and what's that bit I think that's a bit of sail too there we go I'm leaving a bit of white I think it looks really goldeny and I don't know I don't think sails are that color but I really like it that's what I wanted a lovely warm goldeny sail but if you don't want your sail to be golden then you know do do it however you want now the flag i want to be red i'm just looking and seeing what reds i have got i think that's so i've got a scarlet it might be a little bit pinky i'm going to give it a try i'm just going to sharpen it we've got quite a small area for our flag cool my computer's going wee the fan it's going bonkers <laughs> quite amusing but it's quite good because I can leave it doing that while I'm recording so it uh, saves me time I'd have to sit and watch it which is useful 
There are things, editing things I have to do and have to be there, but that bit I don't. There we go. Now the flag here is slightly um, curved and this bit's closer to us to be a little bit lighter. So I want to just darken the each end of the flag and I'm just looking. I'm thinking maybe that raisin colour might just darken a little bit if I'm really gentle. I give it a sharpen. There we go. I'm just going to put a little bit on this end. There we go. Sorry, no talking while I concentrate. <laughs> no talking, it sounds like I'm asking you not to talk. You can talk, I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm in a really silly mood again today. Right, so there's our galleon, as I would like to call it. And now we have got our huge page to deal with. So it's sort of, you think, wow, there's a lot going on here, but actually I'm gonna keep it really simple. Our little boat looks really lost. And I'm gonna use my um, soft pastels. I have this set here. Um, I've no idea if these are a good set or a bad set. They're my only set. So I like them. They work well for me. And I think they're fairly cheap compared to some, I know Faber Castell do a set, which is not a cheap set. I think they're pretty good um, value. Now taking off the paper, whoops, so that you can see all the pastel pen and pastels inside. Now I'm trying to decide what colour, I'm having a look. Now I don't think I want green, see? I think I want it to be blue. I think it'll work well with the colours. Yeah, green would work well with the gold and all that, but I, I just know I'm gonna do blue and I need to pick a blue. Now I could do this sort of greeny blue colour here, but I'm not. I really want one of these blues. Um, I think this one is quite good. So I'm going to pick that one. I can't really explain why. Now I've got my reusable makeup spongy cloth, which I use. Um, I wash them out. They stain a little bit, but it doesn't matter because it doesn't come back out on the pastel. And what I do, I haven't actually got a piece of paper behind here. I'm just going to grab one. Goodness, that's really hot. Um, been on the windowsill. I'll put that in there and then when I put the pastel across here it won't get on the other pages of the book. Now I'm going to just be careful here I'm not going to put a piece of paper over it doesn't usually sit very well but I'm actually going to move my pastels that side so that I don't get any bits over there. They do erase so there's no need to really panic but I'm just trying to keep it clean because I am a messy messy Bessie. So. We're going to scrape across like this with the cloth on the one that I showed you. And you can see it's coming onto the cloth. And then I need to hold the page down and um, not get my greasy fingerprints all over it. So I'm just going to find another little cloth. This one's actually been used, but I'm going to fold it in. And I'm just going to use it to hold the page. And the reason I'm really careful with making sure I hold the page is that when you're doing this like I'm doing just rubbing little circle movements you can rip the paper I've never done it but I have scrunched the paper before where so you need to just hold it and if you as I say if you put your finger down and get a greasy fingerprint on the page it shows up in the pastel in fact I think there's one there but uh, some people apply pastels with their fingers. I used to when I was at school, but um, now I try to avoid touching them. Now I'm going right over all of this pattern. That is the plan. Um, we're going to use some um, pen after to um, draw back in these black lines. Now I really want a fairly even background. And the key, really, to getting pastels even is to just keep going with it until it looks even. It's um, There's no sort of special method that i found. Now, behind this boat is going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, I'm going to leave that for a bit. Just concentrate on these big areas to start with. Now, when we're on top of these... I'm sorry, I'm moving the book. <laughs> When we're on top of these circles, it, it's a little bit harder to see the blue because there's the black there. And make, make sure that I've got enough colour down because once I put, I'm going to use a white pen 
on top of them. I want to make sure they still show up. Try and make this edge straightish like that. I'm not too fast. I don't, you probably can't see very well, but uh, reasonable. And the joy with pastel is it's so quick. Um, if you were doing this in pencil, my goodness, you would hardly have done any yet. You know, yes, um, pastel is less accurate, but for background, that's okay. Even if you were using a really soft pencil, this would be taking you a long, long time. And the results are very different um, than pencil, but I, I like uh, the pastels. They give a different um, feel to a page, and it's fine for water, sky, things like that. I like it. Particularly for sky because you can make it look cloudy. See so where I'm doing that, can you see I've got a sort of circular motion. You can um, you can make sort of clouds and things if you want to. Also I don't really want clouds in my water. <laughs> so I'm going to go over that and, and uh, get, get some more colour down there. But uh, it is a nice... Um, nice thing to be working with nice and quick and um, people use distress ink as well in a similar way um, I have got some I haven't used it enough um, I need to build up my confidence a little bit I have tried it out um, I think I have used it in a video but I've tried it out on a page once and it went through the page and I didn't like that but what I'm gonna do is try it in my Hannah Carlson book because her paper is so thick and um, I know a lot of people use watercolour and things in her book and it doesn't even seem to crinkle the page, which I find quite amazing. I'm even tempted to try some watercolour pencils myself in her books, but um, I'm not sure if I'm quite daring enough for that. But anyway. Now, we're getting close to our boat in the middle. Um, ship, sorry. I realise boats and ships are very different things. But uh, don't ask me the difference. But I'm just trying to make sure I'm getting everything, getting all my big areas done. That bit there looks like it needs a bit more. And I'm going to sort of come in as close to the sh ship as I can without um, going on it. And now what I need is a small tool and I have left it next door. So I'm just going to stop the video and then come back. What I use for my small tools are these cosmetic tipped cotton buds. Um, you could use a q-tip but I like the fact that we've got a point on the end of here it doesn't last long and this end is quite flat as well so I like that more than a more rounded uh, q-tip or cotton bud so what I do is I sort of roll it in the pastel I want it sort of across all of the tip and I'm going to do in these little intricate areas while I've got a nice fresh tip you see now I do wonder if I had the Faber-Castell pastels, whether the colours tie up to the pencils and whether if I had an intricate area like this, I could use a pencil and it would match in. The only thing is the, the texture effect you would get with a pencil would be quite different. So maybe it just wouldn't work, but I don't know if anyone's had any experience of that, let me know. I'm in oh, the Sorry. <laughs> oh, right, I'm going to erase that, but my eraser is dirty. I need to rub it on something. Oh. That was really naughty. I rubbed it on my bookmark. So I'm using my Tombow Mono, and I can just take that bit off. You can't even really see what I'm doing, because I'm not zoomed in. I'm not going to come in too close, because we've got a fairly wide area. You can see... I've got quite dark lines here at the minute. We'll get there. We'll sort it out. I'm going to put some blue in that area there. So just rubbing on here. Putting a bit in there. A bit across here. Doesn't want to uh, come off the thing. Now you could do this pastel first. And then you can erase it off the boat. So you can go across the whole boat. And you can erase it from the boat because um, it erases very easily. You see how the end of my thing's getting a bit yucky. 
it out and the noise it makes. I, I'm going to try the other end because I think it makes a nicer noise. Maybe it doesn't. <laughs> Don't know. But um, you could do the pastel all the way over it, erase the boat and then colour the boat after. I decided to do it the other way around. It's very personal choice. Uh, now these bits are a bit heavy, can you see? But we can erase that down a little bit as well. I'm just going to go over all of the areas first. And then we can take our eraser again and just tidy it a little. I was out this morning, I had a coffee and uh, I was saying to the guy at the coffee shop, I must have a decaf because I'm making videos later and I will be far too, um, and I won't be relaxed enough to have caffeine. I don't have caffeine anyway normally. So look, I can just go over these bits that are a little bit dark, just erase them down to get a layer off. And then get my brush and just brush it off and just have a look and just fiddle and faddle until I'm happy. I'm actually going to get this again and just rub it here and it will just rub it in a bit. And I need a bit more under there. Now be careful when you're doing um, your pencil to use one that's not too smudgy. If I used a smudgy pencil, I would risk when I was doing this, if I accidentally caught the corner, I could risk smudging like that red across. I didn't, wouldn't want to do that. So that's why I was careful with the brand that I chose. So I'm happy with that blue background, but I'm wondering whether, I'm just gonna make it darker in a few places. I've noticed a few areas that probably could do with a little bit of darkening up. So I'm just gonna do that before we go on to our blue, like here. You can press quite hard with this, but you have to be careful that you're, as I say, not gonna rip your paper. So make sure that you're holding it quite near to where you're rubbing. Then you can get down hard, push it right down into the uh, paper. Now, it's worth knowing that you can use a um, uh, blending solution with a pastel and I've done that before and it fixed it into the page once I'd finished and it had dried which was good so I didn't have to use a smelly fixative spray which uh, I have used in the past and I have got some but now it's summer I use them a bit more in the winter I just don't use them because I want to use them outside because they really are quite smelly right I'm going to show you now the um, the white bits I've had enough of doing that. I'm happy with how it looks. And my first task is to put the lid back on my pastels so I don't, I've knocked them before and spilt them all out of the box. So I'm not gonna do that. I've got a piece of scrap paper I'm gonna be leaning on. Okay, that's my first job. Now I've chosen quite a thick Posca pen. This is a PC3M. So if I show you, it's a, uh, oh, I'll just show it you off camera. It's quite a thick nib, and that's what I want for this. Um, but you can, it's a very personal choice. I want to try and cover all of that black if I can. May not be able to, and I'm not gonna worry if I can't, but that's my aim is to cover all of the black. So that's why I've chosen a big thick pen. And I'm just gonna start. Let's some um, let's come in a little bit. But um, you can use a smaller pen. Um, PC1MR is my normal pen of choice. This was just my first Posca pen. It is a bit thick, isn't it? And um, it, um, I don't, I found it too thick, so I bought a smaller one, so I don't use it very much. But I think there's a one which has got this tip. I'm not sure. Now, you may have seen the previous video where I talked about where how some pencils um, bleed through um, coloured um, white. Sorry, some pencils bleed through white. So if you try and cover them up with white, the the colour come, the dye comes through, or the pigment comes through. Um, I find that happens with these pastels as well, with the, some of the pink shades. 
So I just thought I would sort of let you know. I suspect if you had the Faber-Castell brand, it might not happen because it doesn't with their pencils. But I can't be sure because I haven't tried them. But uh, um, you could use, if you had a colour that did that, this blue doesn't. It's usually pinks that do it. If you have a colour that does it, you can use a bleed proof white ink for this task. You could use it with a paintbrush if you're um, handy with a paintbrush. You can put it in a dip pen or fountain pen or uh, or just awkwardly apply it with the end of a pencil like I do. I wouldn't recommend it for something this big. I am still trying to find the ultimate way to apply it because I am just not handy with a paintbrush. I, it's weird because I can handle a pencil perfectly well. Um, I can't always say in the lines, but I'm happy with what I'm doing. And a pen, but a paintbrush? I think it's because I need to know what technique to use so you don't splay the bristles out. You know? Because if you sort of push in the wrong direction, push too hard or whatever, the bristles splay out and then it makes up, it's horrible. But I guess you pop it in water and try and shape them back on the edge of the glass or the whatever it is you're using for your water. I don't usually dip my paintbrush in a glass of water, don't worry. <laughs> and my husband uses the um, water brushes for his watercolour. But, uh, he's very good with his. Now you can see how thick my lines are on this and some of the items, like these little circles, I've almost just filled in. I'm okay with that, but if you want something more accurate, then as I say, a smaller nib might be better. Um, probably a, a 0.8 um, in the Sakura jelly roll, something like that, would be fine. Or as I say, the PC1MR Posca. But it's totally up to you. Now I'm not going to keep waffling on and show you the whole page because I'm just going to keep going with this in the same manner across all of the circles. But what I will show you is a bit of this um, here. But actually I don't think there's any need to. I don't want to do the middle bit because I've got that bit to do. So it'll be wet. I need to move across the page from one side to the other so I don't smudge the pen. It takes a while to dry. I'm still just going to follow the lines across like I did with that. Now this one goes over the top of the sail. That's fine. I'll just go over the top of the sail like it does. Okay. So I will just follow it through in exactly the same way. And the same down here. Now you might want to make these dark blue rather than white. Excuse me. And actually colour them in darker blue pencil. But I want to keep it all with this sort of white colour. I think it's going to work. So that's my idea. But I'm going to finish it and at the end of the video you'll see a finished um, picture. So you'll be able to see what you think and decide if you want to do it this way or not. Or you might just want to leave the black there. You know, you could. Or put some dots of sea foam, or actually fill in the circle in white and leave the black rather than going over the black. There are lots of ways to do it. But this is the way I've chosen to do it. Anyway, so I'm going to stop now. Um, say thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you have a lovely day and um, get some colouring done of some sort or another, whatever it might be. Even if it's just a few minutes, um, it can make such a difference, as we all know. So thank you again and happy colouring. <laughs>